Hello everyone and welcome back to my uh, Bitcoin chat. Thanks for joining me. Um, and as always, I say always, this is only my second video, but as always, um, please like this video, share this video, uh, subscribe to my channel, tell everyone about it. And the simple reason is because as I mentioned in the introduction video to the channel, uh, my aim is to educate everyone coming into the space about Bitcoin from a beginner's perspective. Um, you know, 11 months ago when I got into Bitcoin, uh, I got a, a call from a friend or a colleague. I'd never, I'd never heard of it before. I didn't understand it. So I didn't know what it was. And I'm sure many of you are sort of hearing about Bitcoin across the news in the media, some of it negative, um, which of course um, the media, the matrix always is going to uh, promote over positive stuff, obviously. So keep that one in mind. Um, I wanted to understand what the heck it was. So uh, when my friend called me, he, you know, he said to me, he said, look, you know, um, I feel this is going to be the best thing I've ever advised you to get into. He said, obviously, do your own due diligence, um, you know, watch some videos on YouTube, which I did. And I sort of got totally and utterly hooked on this. And 11 months is a long time in the cryptocurrency space. And I've learned a heck of a lot. But as I said in the in the intro video, I'm not a trader. I don't understand charts. I don't understand anything like that. So what these videos are going to be are simplistic videos from somebody who's really new into the space to help those people that are even newer than me into to the space to understand what it is and what they're supposed to do. Now, um, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you all that I believe I am a Bitcoin maximalist. What does that mean? Um, there are thousands of altcoins out there, alternative coins. We call them altcoins from uh, Monero to Dash, Litecoin, Ethereum, and many, many more coins. And some of them will stand the test of time, but most of them will probably end up going to zero. So the one bit of advice I would give you before we get started on this is I am only advising you to buy Bitcoin. Now, where a lot of newbies make mistakes is they see the price of one whole Bitcoin and then the price of maybe one whole Monero or something of like that. And they think, well, Bitcoin's too expensive. I'll buy some Monero. Big mistake, in my opinion, and it's only my opinion. Uh, Bitcoin is what we call the king. It is um, where blockchain technology has come from. And you don't need to buy a whole Bitcoin. You can buy a tiny bit of a Bitcoin and you can build on that if you like a bit like a savings plan. Uh, so what I want to do on this first video, and I'm not an expert, I'm not a professional, so just bear with me. I've made a few notes down here so that I don't miss anything out. I sort of want to go through a staging process of what Bitcoin is, where it came from, uh, to help you a little bit. So the first thing is, what is Bitcoin? It is basically digital money. Um, it is exciting digital money because whilst it's really volatile and it can go down as well as up, it's only really been around since 2009. Just uh, interestingly, it, it sort of came into existence right after the crash, the financial crash uh, of 2008. So I find that quite interesting. And um, today, you know, here we are in 2018, as I record this video, um, it's been around sort of nine years Um it was there was a white paper produced back in 2009 by an anonymous individual um, who goes by the name of Satoshi Nakamoto. Now, we don't know whether it's a he, a she, a group of people, but this entity produced this white paper that explained how a digital currency will change the world of money. And you know, some of the leading commentators today, you know, feel that it is really disrupting, you know, our um, global currencies from the dollar, the euro, the pound, etc. You know, we've got many countries around the world now that are in financial crisis that are starting to develop their own digital currencies. Now, I want to come on to that um, in a moment because there's a reason I would tell you that's not a good idea. So firstly, Bitcoin is nothing more than digital money. You don't hold it, you trade it, um, if you like, through the internet. Um, the Bitcoin is run by many top 
professional volunteer coders around the world. And those coders um, are constantly upgrading it, improving it. Um, but, but Bitcoin is decentralized. It means there isn't a central hub person, company, office that can be arrested, raided, taken down. So Bitcoin is nothing can stop it. Basically, the only way you will stop Bitcoin is by turning off the internet. And I find that massively exciting. You know, a lot of these altcoins, you've heard me refer to them earlier, um, they are run by entities, by companies, by corporations, by CEOs, if you will. And the challenge with that, if any government thinks, you know, they're doing something they shouldn't, they can simply send a squad, a team into their offices and they can shut the whole operation down. OK, that can't happen with Bitcoin. Um, it is set up. Um, and, you know, when we when we make a Bitcoin transaction, it is not verified by a central hub like a bank or a Visa card. It is verified by other people on the computer that are solving a mathematical algorithm, for want of a better word. Again, disclaimer, you know, I'm not, you know, a whiz on this. It's just things I've picked up. I might get a few things wrong, but basically um, a Bitcoin is produced um, by um, computers or, you know, warehouses these days full of computers solving a mathematical algorithm and whichever computer solves that they get a little or they mine a little bit of bitcoin that becomes theirs so i've said it's decentralized there's no central weak point that makes bitcoin an amazing prospect because nothing can stop it can't be shut down another exciting aspect of bitcoin when Satoshi Nakamoto um, wrote the white paper, it was written in a way that there will only ever be 21 million Bitcoins in circulation. Um, and that's really exciting because it means they become scarce. And when something's scarce and it goes up in monetary value, people will pay more money to access it. And that's really exciting. Now, to date, I think there's approximately 16 million Bitcoin out of the 21 million that have been mined. Um, possibly around 4 million have been lost because people have lost their private keys. And we'll come on to that in another session. I'm not going to cover that on this particular session. So, you know, it is already scarce. Now, when you think of 21 million Bitcoin, and this is the reason I'm trying to educate everyone around me to buy some, because when something's scarce, it can be worth a heck of a lot of money. So, as Bitcoin moves on through the years, every four years, there is what we call a halving. So, so many Bitcoins are mined per year and it's set out in this white paper. And I think a block on the what we call blockchain is mined every 12 and a half minutes. So over 24 hours a day or a week, a month or a year, so many Bitcoins are mined or so many blocks are mined. Um, so over four years, a certain amount of blocks are mined. And what actually happens at the end of every four years is they halve the amount of blocks that will be mined. So 12 and a half minutes would go to 25 minutes or something like that. So every four years, they become scarcer and scarcer and scarcer. So let's say we get to 2041 when the last Bitcoin will be mined and there's no more going to be mined ever. So we know three or four million are lost because people have lost their keys and they'll never, ever be recovered. OK, so out of that, you've got, say, 21 million, take off four million. You've got about 17 million coins in circulation on computers around the world. So now look at how many millionaires and billionaires there are around the world. How many banking institutions, you know, clearing houses, financial institutions globally that will ultimately want to have a few Bitcoin? Well, it doesn't take the brains of a rocket scientist to know if there's only 21 million coins and there are way more than 21 million millionaires. There are billionaires out there that might buy hundreds and thousands of Bitcoins. It means if you get hold of a bit of Bitcoin today, no matter how small, that Bitcoin in 5, 10, 20 years could be worth 
tens of thousands of pounds. So even if all you can do is buy a hundred quids worth, buy a hundred quids worth and do that right now. Now, one of the benefits of, of, of um, owning Bitcoin, there is also a detriment. And the benefit, it means you take uh, individual sovereignty away from the banks of your money, which means you control your money. I don't know if you're aware of this, but banks, they take your money in your current account or your savings account and they loan it out to businesses and make fortunes on your money. If a country goes into crisis, the banks can freeze your money. And that's becoming more apparent as the years go on. You know, countries like America, they are printing dollars like they're going out of fashion. We're heading for something called hyperinflation. It's happened in third world countries and they've actually froze bank accounts. And that's pretty scary no matter where you live in the world. So when you own your own Bitcoin and you own your own keys, and we'll talk about that in a future video, it means you are in control of your money, not banks. But of course, the downside is if you lose your key, you have got no way of getting your Bitcoin. It is lost forever. If you um, are reckless on the Internet with your key, a hacker will see your key, find it, clone it. They'll steal your Bitcoin and it's gone forever. So with the power of owning your own money, taking control of your own, um, you know, individual sovereignty comes a price. And that price is you have to learn how to protect your money as well. Um, it is immutable. If you what does that mean? If you make a payment via a bank and it goes wrong, it can be reversed by your bank. You pay some Bitcoin to someone and you do it incorrectly it is gone forever. Comes back to learning how to look after your Bitcoin, if you will. So immutability is really, really important. Now, they say that Bitcoin going forward will be the future of money and you can already make transactions with Bitcoin. I've watched videos where people have booked hotel rooms with Bitcoin. You can even buy a house with Bitcoin. Now, that's fantastic, OK, to be able to do that. Um, but of course, what a lot of people are realising is because the limited supply they're buying it and they're storing it away on private devices and they're including me and they're leaving it there for the short to medium term. Now, I'm heading for 60. So, you know, like uh, unlike many of the youngsters today, I haven't got 10, 20, 30, 40 years of storing my Bitcoin away. So I've got to um, make my store of value work for me so that maybe in three, four, five, eight years, I've got something worthwhile behind me that I can have a great retirement with, um, maybe see a bit of the world with, leaving a will to my loved ones. And that's what I want to leave as my legacy. So for now, guys, uh, thank you for watching. I'm going to stop it there um, until the next time. Please, please, please. I'm going to put a couple of links below that will explain from Coindesk what Bitcoin is and a couple of other videos. I think if you're brand new into the space that you might find useful in getting an idea how you would attain some Bitcoin, etc. But for now, that's it for this one. Um, I'll catch you all in a few days on the next one. Look out for that. And as um, previously mentioned, please do like this video, share this video, um, catch me on, quit, on Twitter at UK Bitcoin Master. Um, I'm also on something called Steam It. Um, this video is on YouTube. It's all going to be also going to be on DTube, which is again uh, a channel like um, YouTube, but it's decentralized again. Um, I won't go into that right now, but all this stuff is so exciting built on blockchain technology. And I am, um, I am if you like, grabbing it with both hands and eating this information, digesting it, learning all about it, because it really, really excites me. So again, that is it, guys. Thanks for watching. Like the video, share the video, hit subscribe. If you want to know if I do any live videos, hit the bell button for instant notifications. But beyond that, bye for now, guys. I'll catch you on the next one.